Okay, hello everyone. Okay, hello everyone. Okay, hello everyone. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Consciously. Hello everyone, welcome in this new uh, Touch Designer tutorial on how to automate things in Touch Designer using just a little bit of Python. So uh, today we're gonna continue building on our last uh, tutorial, not actually um, making it better or whatever, but try to correct some behavior we had while building it. So uh, maybe if you already done this tutorial, tutorial uh, you'll remember it. If you have not done it, I encourage you to go see it and then maybe come back or actually it's very not important you can start right here because there's no relationship to what we're going to be talking and those visuals so um what we had uh, to do on and on is when we were creating let's say adding a math to uh one of our tops that would be controlling our instancing we would roll back to this default behavior of the top which would be to have uh, input smoothness and viewer smoothness in interpolate uh, pixel uh, parameter so today we want to control this and uh, to automate it in a way that uh, is reliable and reusable so uh, first let's address the elephant in the room that is we can um, correct this right in the preference in the tops right here uh, default viewer smoothness you can put it to nearest pixels so that would work but to me this is the same problems uh, um, just in the opposite in the sense that at some places I do want uh, my pixels to be in uh, my, my smooth my input smoothness my viewer smoothness to be in nearest pixel mode and in my render setup, I do not desire this. I do not desire some, uh, let's look at it some, uh, oh, right now it's in the nearest pixel. Uh, I want some anti-aliasing. I want some smoothness in my render. I don't necessarily want some 32 bits either. Um, so this way we'll be able to control each part of our network while being in the same, um, uh, at the same level. So to do this, uh, we're going to use this um, very useful uh, that, which is upfind. OK, so what does upfind does? Um, they came up with a really clever name that will tell exactly what it's doing. It finds operator. So it, right now it's finding every operator uh, in the network. Uh, in at in our component, uh, in our parent component. So uh, dot dot means um, my parent and so uh, all the children of my parent are listed in here. So I do not want everything. I only want uh, tubs, right? So let's untoggle everything except tubs. Okay, so those are all the tubs that are in this network. We can verify this by adding a noise. And we see that it appears here, noise one, if I rename it, uh, a noise. It's now here. Okay, so we know this works. Let's open our callback, um, our callback script right here, and let's uh, open it in our script editor of our choice. Uh, I'll split my views here like this. Wonderful. Okay, now let's make this just a little bigger so we can see everything. Okay, so um, I'm going to keep those four lines and I'm going to keep this uh, on up found, but all the rest, I'm going to delete it. You can read it if you wish. I just wanted uh, to make the script a bit clearer with uh, less things uh, distracting us. Okay, so the first things we want to look at is this, the cur up which is the op being queried. So this means uh, each intervention we're going to do on the cur op will be um, assigned to uh, operators that are in the list here. OK, so we can do this. Um, we can see this quite easily and I have not tested. So let's hope I remember this correctly. So if I do cur up dot bypass equal true. If I save, everything should be bypassed. Oh, my mistake. Corrupt.bypass. Oh, in, indentation of, in Python. Okay, so you see everything is being bypassed, all the tops. 
if I revert back to false, oh, to false, everything comes back alive. Okay, so just this was kind of just a proof of concept. So what we want to do precisely, so let's bring back a noise. We want our default behavior um, to be something else than this, than uh, input, input smoothness, interpolate pixel, etc. So let's just for the first, for, first let's let's do this one, okay? Because we'll, we'll, we'll want the default um, usage of tops to be uh, reusable in like the render setup. So let's just do this. So cur up dot par dot and we're going to hover over input smoothness to see exactly the, um, the name of the parameter, input filter type, input filter type equals to one. Then let's copy this and this again, and uh, this time filter type. So just take out input filter type and pixel format, which is just called format, which is just called format. It's at zero and the, this other one is at two. Okay. So um, if I save this, we'll see some changes going on probably. Yep. So we see that everything is going back to, um, oh, to, to, to uh, user input. We can even put one if we want to go to eight bit. Uh, let's keep it at zero right now. So this is obviously not the behavior we want, but we might need it later. So let's call this one default. Let's uncomment. Un let's uh, un let's comment everything out, and let's copy paste it. Okay. So what we actually want in this specifically in this tutorial is to have nearest pixel here, nearest pixel here, and 32-bit float here. Okay, so here we see there's a clear, clear separation between pixels. Let's see if we go in monochrome. No, we don't see it better. So we, so um, this is already pretty much done. Like everything. Oh wait, let's. Uh, oh no, we didn't do anything, right? So we have the um, nearest pixel, nearest pixel, thirty-two bit float. So zero, one, four. So zero, one. Okay, now this works. Now this should work. Everything is in a good format. Beautiful. So this works. So once again, the only problem with this is it's affecting everything and I don't want it to affect everything. I want it to affect only um, those tops or the tops I decide. So, uh, but in the past I had, I have, I have had two strategies. Uh, let me show you my most uh, modern one, but I think both can actually work quite well. So let's say um, when you're creating like the the network and all thing and all that, I I spend most of my time working on the logic and the instancing and a bit less time working on uh, the rendering out just because um, to me it's a less uh, um, complex part let's say. Um, so what I do is and it's not just a it's not less complex it's just. Um, it's usually faster to do to do the pose than do all like uh, the logics and uh, the calculations. So what I do is I like to use tags. So we can write something like if b I use b for bypass in cur up dot tags. So then let's do the default. Okay. So what does this mean? This is if there's B in any cur current operator. So the op being queried has the tag B. It will roll back to this behavior. Okay, so let's test it. So right now we see the pixel really uh, neatly. So if I just go in this, uh, in this noise and I write B, right away we see the um, nearest pixel behavior to disappear right away. If I take out the B, it reappears. So that's a super good way to do it. Uh, we could select all those and just add um, a B tag and that would take care of it. Okay, so that's some way to do it. 
Another way to do it, which I like a lot, is uh, to use um, the position of our nodes in the network. So we have those uh, this natural axis in the network, which uh, kind of define um, our, our sections, uh, and we're going to use it. So if you did not know, uh, and let's bring in a text, text comp, okay? Um, if you did not know, we can use the, this function, uh, this method, which calls me, which is the current operator, me on node y, and put it in Python mode, and it's gonna give me. Let's we just put this in uh, autofill, yeah, and it's gonna give me um, the values expressed in network editor units. So now if I move this around, it's really in relationship to where it's positioned in this network so you see right if i go under this x this uh, this axis it goes it, it's the zero it goes it's uh now it's positive and if it's under it's negative so just because we're in a tutorial mode let's uh let's do this a bit cleaner and let's say uh y equals well y is like the y equals and this is not going to work because me don't know what node y is an integer so let's encapsulate it in uh, parentheses and use the str uh, function in python to transform it in um, in a string beautiful let's do the same with the uh, the x so i'm just going to copy this me dot node x so let's take the x here and the x here and like this okay so this is good but uh it's kind of crowded let's put the x on a separate line so let's add the escape character um so you can just add um inverted dash with an n was gonna which is gonna skip a line and we have to tell the come to be in multi-line I guess there we go okay so this, this, this is just a like an example of a network editor units so if we move this around you see it's being affected by its the its own uh, position the position of the operator in the touch designer uh, network editor okay so how is this useful so jumping back in our code so this is one way to do it the other way we're gonna be we're gonna do we're gonna use is say uh, let's say pause x equals cur up dot node x and we're gonna say now if pause x is bigger than zero so if it's not negative let's use our oops our default um, behavior. Oops, like this and comment. Okay, so now uh, this this makes it pretty cool to watch because and let's put this in like a ten by ten pixels like this. It's very clear when it's uh, interpolated or not. So right when I'm gonna cross this line, you're gonna see that we go back in a, I like to call it like a render setup. So nearest pixel, nearest pixel, and we can even say an eight bit. So yeah, let's correct this. We want to be, pixel is gonna be an eight bit. So eight bit now. And if I re revert here, so we could do this for a ton of things. We could do this for the resolution, uh, for some custom parameters, etc. So there's a lot of use case for this. Okay, so this is already done. Uh, let me just encapsulate this in, uh, let's collapse select it in a base and let's call this, I like to call this one up control. Okay, like this, it's almost ready uh, to be saved in our talks library. Let's do a little customized component, uh, add a page which should be called settings by default, but it's not, so let's add a settings and let's call, and let's just uh, add the OP the OP object, no, not OP object, just OP. So setting OP, beautiful. So let me cut this and I'll bring it back, and I'll bring it up to the root of the project. Um, 
and here it is. So right now, if I just um, drag my component, which I want to be affected uh, on my OP, so we're gonna see. Oh yeah, right. What did I? What did I not do? <laughs> I did not associate uh, this up this um, this parameter to this uh, up find um, component target. So let's bind those two. So now now we see that this op even this op this um this component this base even if it's not in um in here which is um the desired location it's going to still affect it so uh we see all the pa the the older um, parameters um operators we used to affect and let's go check if it's still working so i'm i can still take my noise here and bring it up here and it's working perfectly and you see our network is still uh, pretty clear, pretty uh, pretty tight, and uh, we've moved everything outside of it. So in this way, we could control our, like the whole project like like this just by signaling that we want to control the route, or we can be very precise into unto uh, very precise on which um, which component we will be targeting. Okay, so I hope this was clear. Uh, if you have uh, any questions, uh, please uh, ask them and uh, feel free to leave a comment and like uh, this video. Hopefully, I'll see you soon. Cheers.